dun 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 oh can't see me there we go I moved my mic over a little bit just so that the audio is a little bit clearer so yeah it'll be kind of intrusive in this shot but you know uh what do you do I mean like I basically could just bring it right up to my face I mean if we really don't care about the mic so we are going to continue our efforts on the custom space marine chapter of which i still really haven't thought of a name uh it is basically a uh native american type of uh theme going on uh basically it's a little bit uh more of uh, what my particular culture is uh being ojibwe Nishnabek, as to be more correct. So, this is actually the uh, symbol, the Thunderbird, that uh, is on our is our our emblem, little bear paw, bear paw, to denote the squadron. And of course, I also sculpted one on the backpack. Sculpting is not really uh, a very strong suit for me. Oh, jeez. And um, you know, I do what I can. I do what I can and you know yeah so we are going to continue sculpting uh, because uh, I was talking in the last episode that I think I want to put uh, an animal skull here instead of having it a human skull and uh, there was two ways I was going to go about it either I was going to put a bear there or uh, an eagle and I think I'm going to go with an eagle just because it's kind of different and you don't really see a lot of bird skulls i think on marines i don't know the only ones i can think of that might have a bird skull in here this place is possibly like raven guard those are the only ones i can think of that might have a bird skull in this place or have like a bird skull around them but otherwise yeah so to continue on with the vibe uh i'm gonna sculpt a bird skull here and then of course uh the almighty helmet needs something and i'm not sure if i want to put uh, a skull here or if i want to have something else in its place and i kind of have an idea on what i want to do in that place but you know i'm not 100 percent sure uh which is why this is pretty pretty much last because obviously it'll tie this uh, whole motif together there is uh, another thing that I, another detail that I want to sculpt that I'm really not sure how to go about it. And yeah, so it's basically big, uh, big eagle feathers. Eagle feathers, you know, are an important thing uh, in Native American culture. Um, many, many nations on North America, obviously, um, you know, employ feathers in their uh, regalia. Uh, eagle feathers are in high regard but other feathers have other meanings and uses as well so you know it's not like it has to be just eagle feathers to be any kind of significance it can be any feathers goose you know hawk pigeon whatever right i mean you know kind of it's kind of hard to imagine though like you know pigeon feathers Ooh, deadly the deadly warrior who has pigeon feathers all over him but i digress so that's the plan. I'm not 100% sure on where I want to go with the helmet. If I want to just simply sculpt a skull or something on the forehead, or if I want to do something more closer to, um, you know, my own uh, culture. And I'm thinking that I think I would rather do something, you know, different. And so I kind of I think of what I will do is the idea which will require me to get eagle skull or eagle um, feathers made so first first things first is we're gonna remove this skull from the chest not entirely not the entirety of it because I think I'll use the basis of the back of the curvature of the skull I think I'll use that as my basically my starting point and kind of determine scale I really don't want the beak to protrude very far so you know it'll feel more like the skull is recessed more I guess kind of like how a human skull looks in a lot of the uh, the 40k designs and stuff right like it's not like it's the whole skull just kind of kerplunk there it's like you know it's 
protruding through. So there's some of it that still remains in behind the plane, right? And so that's kind of where I'm at as far as, you know, getting this stuff done. Uh, I just want to remove a lot of the skull here just so that wherever I go with the sculpting, you know, I'm not bumping into the uh, previous skull there. But yeah, I mean, we're moving along. We have been working on this, what, a week now? Mind you, I only ever film uh, what I'm working on, so I, there is no, like, um, or not much between time when I am, uh, you know, working on stuff. So really quickly here, I'm just going to kerplunk that right off. Just like that. And just like that, we've ruined the Space Marine. <laughs> just like that. It was that fast. We just we just completely ruined the effort. And I'm just going to plane it down just a little bit here, just for my own OCD. Try to be careful here. It's soft, but it's not like it's not like rubber soft. It is pretty straightforward to get through this material and just kind of plane it down. And you just take little chunks at a time. Be mindful of your positioning uh, with your blade and everything like that so you don't accidentally cut into yourself. I know there are many of you out there who have bladed yourself at some point in this hobby. It's most wear it like a badge of honor. And why not? Scars are cool. Scars are, uh, you know, a sign that you, uh, you've, you've, you've uh, endured pain and survived. I don't really need this to be perfectly smooth or flat or anything like that. I just want it, most of that material gone, as you can kind of see there. How that whole face is just disappeared. But that's pretty much it. I'm just gonna continue my efforts and get this figure ready for painting. Color scheme. Ah, that's the other one. Color scheme. What to do about the color scheme? I have ideas, but I am open to better ideas. <laughs> I'm always open to a better idea. I'm always open. My door is always open. All right. Yeah, I also, I think previously I talked about, um, you know, like possibly doing like a symbol on the knees. I don't know if I will. I think I just kind of want to keep moving forward. I don't want to get bogged down with uh, just constantly, you know, sculpting more and more stuff onto this thing. I just want it to be fairly straightforward. Uh, I want it to have, you know, a fairly typical look for Space Marines, right? So I don't really feel like it necessary to like sculpt some stuff onto the forearms or you know what have you right okay so we got our scalp or area prepared uh we'll put these away let's get our almighty green stuff out yeah i think that's pretty much it do 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 do, 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 do. It's another warm one where I am. Hopefully, uh, a lot of you are staying cool, doing what you can to beat the heat, as it were. Hopefully. Hopefully. This blue stuff just goes wherever it likes, eh? Wherever it likes. I move this further into this uh, cellophane and god dang it. It's like going wherever it wants. That's kind of crazy. And it's sticky as hell. <laughs> like not like get all over your finger sticky, but it's all over the place. Uh, ba -da -ba -ba. Kim, hey. Did you get yourself a green stuff uh, world roller? No. That is, no, I, I picked up this uh, tube of green stuff from uh, Green Stuff World like 
ages ago. It was quite a while ago that I picked this stuff up. And yeah. That's all. It was a while ago. I don't really have a whole lot of, you know, things from Green Stuff World. Not that, you know, not that I, it's like, oh, it's for Green Stuff World. But, you know, it's not a whole lot. A lot of times, I mean, I, I often will just look for, you know, stuff readily available. And on this side of the pond, not a lot of places carry products from Green Stuff World. At least not to my knowledge. And not in my experience. This is probably way more than I need. Or maybe not. Might have looked like lots, but maybe not. Hold on. I'm just going to give it a quick roll. Roll, roll, roll. Slow your roll. Ah, actually, it's not too bad. Yeah, okay. We'll use that. Screw it. We'll use it. Screw it. I'm going to roll this stuff out again so it fits back in the tube. In the tube. I don't want to spend the rest of my life in the tube. If anybody can tell me what, what that reference was. <laughs> oh no. I don't want to spend the rest of my term in a tube. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead and write it down below. If you're watching this on YouTube. Or Twitch. I am streaming this on Twitch, so... Oh, this, this is definitely too much. Let's cut this, uh, let's cut about a third off. There we go. Get in there, get in there. Oh, get in there. Oh my God, there we go. Let's give it a roll. Let's see if this is too much, not enough, or just right. If we hit that Goldilocks zone. Now I can already kind of feel like it's too much. Yeah, it feels like too much. Yeah, it's a little bit too much. About a third, another third off of it. Oop, stay over here. There they are. So we'll take another third off. I should dunk that in the water. When working with this stuff, always, always have some water with you. Water is your friend. It'll keep your tools clean and spare you the heartache of having to try and clean up green stuff off of your tools which is a complete pain <laughs> let's see here does this feel about the same Ooh, it's pretty darn close yeah we're gonna go just a, whoop, just a little bit more take a little bit more off just a bit I couldn't even tell you what fraction it was fractions really weren't my strong suit back in the day <laughs> Despite having a mathematician for a father, I. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I think this is better now. Yeah, we're pretty close there. They're pretty darn close. Good enough. That's close enough for me. That's close enough. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, you know out here with uh, a beaker or anything like that trying to uh you know a beaker you know calipers i'm trying to think of like exact measuring tools i can't think of them the names escape me at the moment <laughs> anyway put that stuff right back in my tube there you go let's see stork for next time okay we got our part ready to prep i have reference material in front of me so that I can see. Basically, I just Googled Eagle Skull. And now I'm not going to sculpt it, uh, you know, 100% like, um, you know, what you see. Although there are some elements in an Eagle Skull that I do want to capture. Basically, the way it has like these lines around the orbital socket as well as his uh, nasal cavity and of course the um, the overall shape 
It is not going to be an open mouth. It will be um, closed. I think the way I will do it is a bit more on a downward kind of angle. So it's kind of, you know, it's looking like it's not like the skull here but previously was kind of looking straight out. I think the, I'm going to do the eagle skull so it's kind of like on an angle downward. That way it looks kind of aggressive and intimidating and all those other uh, adjectives. So, yeah. All right. We're going to mix this up. Make sure my hands are nice and moist. Am I yelling? <laughs> I moved the mic a bit closer because I'm usually, usually whenever I'm doing this, I, um, I have the mic a little bit further away, but today I moved the mic in a little closer and <laughs> I'm still kind of projecting. So, um, yeah, let me know if I'm, if I'm screaming into the mic for y'all. <laughs> All right. So, like I say before, I need the needite. So basically I just fold it, push it, fold it, push it, fold it, push it, and do this a whole bunch of times until it feels nice and buttery smooth. Probably really don't need that much, but you know, I end up always kind of over mixing, but you know, whatever. Needite isn't terribly expensive depending on where you get it. Um, like this stuff is like, you can find this in any automotive, um, you know, big box stores, anything like that. Two part epoxy. And depending on the brand, you know, and depending on what, um, you know, what level of hardness it also goes as well as, um, you can get some that, you know, they're gray, white, green, uh, blue and blue and white I've seen and blue and yellow. I think the blue and yellow is popular from amongst us modelers because, well, it's easier to see when this is thoroughly mixed, right? And of course, once you start the mixing process, the clock starts counting down for how long uh, you have to work with this before it becomes uh, solid. <clears throat> That's fun stuff. I'm hoping this this really doesn't take us too long because then I can get to some some other stuff and especially if there's enough left I might like I have I'm probably gonna only use probably less than half of this little blob but you never know and if we have time I may try my hand just really rough without kind of uh, looking I may try and sculpt uh, a feather right away green leaf terrain Woo, get naked um, <laughs> no we aren't this isn't that kind of cam show buddy <laughs> it's not that kind of show I don't even know what kind of show this is what is this what would you consider this kind of uh, stream vlogging because it ain't a tutorial even though I do end up talking a lot about you know procedures and techniques and you know what have you it's not really intended as a um, as a tutorial on stuff and in fact with all this uh, play with the green stuff all this sculpting I mean like I am by no stretch a you know I would not consider myself a sculptor in the slightest this is mostly you know new to me I don't do a lot I mean like in the past you know it's making little straps make a pouch maybe you know that kind of stuff right like I don't um, I don't do a lot of it I even kind of pat myself on the back like this is a bounty hunter I made way back in the day you know you can see the green stuff's not terrible but it's really really rough it's really rough but anyway yeah that's a bounty hunter from Necromunda I made way back in the day if I could do it all over again, it'd be a little bit different. Just a little bit. All right. Grab our trusty, rusty chapstick. This is some cheapy, cheapy brand I've got going on here. Nothing terribly expensive. It's not like you need the best uh, chapstick in the world that's made from the uh, beeswax from the anus of 
you know, royal bees. Uh, okay. Let's kind of clear my area a little bit here. Put my blades away so I don't jab myself. We've got some tools. As noisy as that is. Um, let's take a guess here. Uh, probably about a th almost half. We'll go with almost half. Now that feels like too much because we're going to be moving a lot of material away. Shit, I could probably even just start the actual sculpt right from my hands here. Just to kind of get the approximate shape. I'm starting to think this might actually be a multi-stage uh, sculpt. Honestly. Uh, just because of the shape and how much I want it to protrude. Yeah, that's still too much. It's starting to stick my fingers a lot. Let's pull off that much more. Let's remix that. Yeah, I'm thinking that this might actually be a multi-stage one. Just because this really is not necessary to have a whole bunch of material. It's not going to be a gigantic skull. It's only going to occupy about as much space as the previous skull did. But, yeah. Like, imagine that's the back. That's the front. And here's the overall shape. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's probably about the right size. All right, let's slap it on. Just slap it right on. Bang. And, yeah. If I was really, really nitpicky, I probably could have um, prepared the surface of the, the, the figure itself a little bit more. Looks like there's a gap in the eagle. You know what? I think this part is sculpted separate and then attached during the uh, assembly phase of this figure. That's interesting. I thought it would just been solid, but no, there's a gap there. And then they just slap that in. Huh. Interesting. For anybody who cares. <laughs> All right, I need to get my reference material in front of me. Um, let's see here. Yeah, we're using we're using this skull. That's the front version. Yeah, I kind of need all this in front of me. So I think that's about. Yeah, I can still see the chat. Yep. All right. All right. Let's start sculpting a skull, a bird skull. Now I see some skulls golden eagle and he has like this this bone ridge that comes you know what i probably have do i have a window i can show you guys what i'm looking at all i did basically was oh no i don't i thought i had that prepared i didn't um but all it does is from the brow closest over the nasal cavity and it comes across over the orbital it gives it a nice aggressive look as most eagles do, they have a nice, you know, aggressive look to their um, to their skulls. Sorry, I'm just moving my mic a little bit. So I can kind of see everything all at once. Anyway, all right, let's do it. <clears throat> I have never attempted to sculpt a little skull. I have never attempted to sculpt a bird skull. So, so you'll have to bear with me as I work my way through this. I think what I'll do is I'm going to try and rough this out with my finger. So I'm going to grab some chapstick here so I can smooth this out because I want the big, the big takeaway of this is I want that beak. That beak has to be there, right? Otherwise we don't know it's a, it's an eagle. <laughs> it's just some sort of bird. <laughs> so, yeah. And I don't want it to protrude too far from the figure. Starting to turn into actually more like a hawk's beak, but 
whatever. It's some sort of aggressive bird of prey. That's the important part. That's what we want to convey. Some sort of, you know, warrior type of bird. So that's kind of the shape right there. We're going to blend this back. Blend that in. And we'll carry on. I think the big thing to, to capture is the orbital and the nasal hole. And then if I can also fudge in a... Um, a jaw because the, the eagle's jaw is actually quite minimal in comparison to the rest of it it's really the orbital do I have something to make that orbital oh wait frick I hit my knee oh let's see here do I have like a little round thing in my arsenal of tools here. Um, I'm just looking for um, something that can give me like pure round shape. We might have to make it up. Yeah. If I had like, you know, those little dimplings, like, the, like almost like a ball peen. The end of a, the end of a paintbrush might do it. I mean, or I could just, you know, wing it. As per. Uh, I want something more rounded. Almost like like something like a tool like this kind of shape, right? I think would be pretty darn handy. Just kind of make that the, the shape for the orbitals. Dang, dang, dang. Dang, dang. All right, let's just start getting this stuff ready. Let's just do this. So all I'm doing is I'm just blending this back into the previous skull shape just so that it, you know, feels kind of uniform and feels like it was always part of this design. I'm also trying to keep it off of other details. This also makes sure that, you know, the the green stuff is going to adhere to the surface. So it's got a good grab on onto the surface and it won't easily come off. It'll still come off. I mean, like if we were really aggressive and just kind of like pulled at this once it was fully cured, it would come right off. But we're not going to be aggressive. Too aggressive. Hopefully. Mm. Yeah, I really want something to dimple that shape. Something small. Mm. I, I must have something that will help me with this. I must. Surely. 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 I even have some other sculpting materials, which are of no help. Oh, my shapers! I forgot. I completely forgot of all about my shapers. Oh wait, what's this? I got more tools. No. What's this? Ugh. No. What's this one? This is an older one. Uh, this is a really old set. Still good though. This old set, I can't remember. 
wax carvers. I don't know. But do I have a round shape in here? Not really. And some of these are a little cleaner than my other ones. Guess I barely use them. <laughs> Again, I don't do a lot of sculpting, so don't be surprised that yeah, a lot of my sculpting tools are pretty pretty clean. <laughs> but I forgot about my shapers, and my one shaper here has a really good round end, and that one yeah too. Okay, now these shapers are I think these are medium softs, so they should work out just fine as far as being able to move material around. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure these are medium firmness. I don't think these are soft. These are size zero. They're firm. Because I think it goes um, a white, a gray, and a black. Black being the firmest. I think I'll use this one right here. It's got a nice pointy round end to it. Yeah. Let's give this one a try. We'll give it a try. Actually, let's see these. Now, the shapers are actually really great in a lot of regards. Um still keep the tool moist even though it is silicone the green stuff still would kind of grab a hold of it so you do want to use uh, your um, whatever medium you're using to keep your tools uh, slick yeah you still want to be using it even with the silicone tool tips yeah let's move some material around yeah I think this was what I was using last when I was uh, working on the uh, Henry, Henry Cavill skull and the rock skull or skulls, the uh, fucking heads that uh, you know I put them on my Bandai Marines. Yeah, this is pretty good right here. This is blending it in nicely. Nice, nice, nice and blended. Blend, blend. But we do want to move some of the material around a bit more as it's starting to stick and we want to move some of this around I'm kind of messing this up and it's the point is messing it up on me When working with green stuff, though, it can be a bit of a pain sometimes because you can end up dinging your your surface and can just make life a little bit more painful. Yeah, I want a little bit more material up here. So let's push the skull back a bit more. Shape this material down. Yeah. Yeah, see, it's, it's starting to protrude just a little too far now. So I'm going to use my fingers here just to move it around a bit. Do, 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 do. Yeah, there we go. a little bit more pressure and push that back again like I said I don't really want this skull to protrude really far out of the chest because I think it'll just look kind of funny if it if it like is like way forward right at least I think but again it's really just all about that beak shape Yeah, I'm pretty sure, yeah, the um, the shapers are, it, it's white for really soft, gray for medium, and black for hard. Pretty sure. But yeah, I mean, like, they're all different hardnesses, and I mean, like, it's not a one or other type of situation. I mean, like, you know, it's like having a number one brush and a number two brush and a, and a, and a triple zero brush. I mean... That one is not better than the other. They're they're designed for different tasks, and the sculpt these shapers are the same thing. It's it's not a one or other thing. It's it's the right tool for the right job kind of thing. 
That's the point. But I often work with these, these gray ones uh, just because of their medium firmness because I have played with the white ones and, you know, I've never really done a lot of uh, refined, you know, kind of sculpting, you know, where I'm really, really, you know, trying hard. The eye should actually be more like... looks more like a nose but yeah yeah I think I have to make this feel like the eyes are right if into the wings it's probably why you don't see a lot of <laughs> these bird skulls in the sculpts right because I'm looking at the head on but then from the side yeah I guess it kind of does go this way so we can make this side go this. And then the nasal cavity is this triangular shape right around here. It's kind of a triangular shape like that. So try and make this a little bit more open. Triangular shape like this. So something like that. Of course, when you're looking at it head on, his nasal cavity is like, how did I mess that up? Oh, because I didn't bring this forward. That's why. And I started the triangle a little closer. That's okay. I'm just going to enlarge these orbitals a bit more. Yeah, something like that. want to maintain that aggressive kind of look again because it's eagles right eagles eagles there's a fly in my office again piss off so the nasal cavity is more like when you're looking at it kind of head on Kind of right up here. It's kind of like right there. Like little nasal holes. Kind of like that. When you look at it from the side, yeah, there still needs to be a lot more beak. I do not want this coming too far forward, but it might be too long. Of course, I did say I wanted it to be angled downwards, though. Maybe I should just do it more of a top-down kind of perspective. Think that would work out better? It was more top-down? So it was more like that kind of perspective, you know? We could still do that. It's not hard. <laughs> Listen to me talking like I know what I'm doing, right? <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're going to just grab this whole thing and shift the perspective of it downwards. So we're going to create them more like that. Again, I really did not want to have the beak protruding too far but I think at the top of the head I want there which means the skull is going to come back more something like that and I'm messing this whole thing up now <laughs> I, I've ruined it now it's all ruined yeah it's all it's all done now pack up we're done it's all messed up. Yeah. No. 
sucks. I think I'll, I think I'll look at it in this perspective, kind of like looking up at it, just to kind of get it right. I just want to move some of this material around. Oh, yeah. which one was it? Which one was I using? This one? Yeah, it's this one. I just want to clean up some of what I had done here. Push some of this like material that would be close to where the jaw is. I want that away. So, that's mm. off. Can fly. Yeah, something a little bit closer to that. The top of an eagle's head is a little flat looking. But yeah, so I think that's the angle we're going to work towards. So it's kind of downward looking. And so you're seeing more of the top of the head, right? And so we're going to push this material back a bit more. Push that. I mean, I guess it doesn't have to be, you know, a strict one-to-one. -one, but I'd like it to be as close, just so that it's not visually confusing as to what it is right I, I don't want people to go look at it and go oh is that a seagull <laughs> no it's not a freaking seagull <laughs> but yeah and the more i play with this the more it seems to move around on me and there's a freaking f this fly is pissing me off in my office i'm gonna lose my shit in a second I mean, I could just go for like a stylized skull, right? Just try and capture the essence of it and just make it look a bit more, you know, hard lines kind of thing. We could fake that, right? Instead of going for like a, an accurate one, like an actual, you know, skull, we could just make it look more like a stylized skull. Now, they're doing a stylized skull, you know, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I could not tell you how to go about that. This fly can fuck up. Yeah. Sorry, I just keep moving the overall shape around because because I keep working it. The skull is kind of getting bigger on me and I don't want it to get bigger so I don't really want it to be this gigantic shape on the f on the model right yeah I think I might have to just go with a stylized skull just because if I go for um, you know like actual kind of eagle skull I end up with something that you know I have to make kind of look realistic and that probably that probably just wouldn't look cool anyway. Whereas if I try and do like a stylized eagle skull, it might look a little bit better. See right now, look, this is looking more like a big claw on his chest. Actually looks more like a melted gummy uh, jelly bean, but you know, whatever. <laughs> 
I'm just trying to I'm just trying to visualize the um, the the shape I'm after. And I think this is closer to what I want. But it's hard to get in this little space to kind of clear that where that beak is supposed to go. But anyway, back to work. Um, yeah, we'll use this tool again. Kim, you might want to angle the skull so the tip of the beak uh, meets the breastplate. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Because I'm, I'm thinking that it, it, it should look like the when you're looking up at it, it looks like a big eagle skull, right? But when you're looking head on, it's, you know, this... It's a, more of a teardrop shape, you know, that's really pointy at the end. That's the that's the dangerous end of, of an eagle. Actually, it's not the only dangerous end. Actually, eagles have big fucking claws, too. All right. Let's go. Now. Yeah, we should be okay going like this. I just want to work some of this material in behind the skull. And I sure as hell do not want this to get confused for like a vulture or something, right? I want this to feel like you're, you know, as soon as you see it, go, oh, that's, yeah, that's a damn eagle skull, right? That's a damn eagle skull. I know what an eagle is. Just want to clean up a little bit more here. I'm getting some green stuff between the little links of feathers. Just to kind of clear it up a bit. This is more of an end phase kind of thing, but we're doing it now anyway. Hmm. Yeah, I think we're getting close to the overall shape. Part of my brain's telling me to knock some material off, but I don't think so. I'm going to ignore that I'm going to ignore that voice at the moment. Just for the moment anyway. tapered a little closer though. Is there a freaking hair on there? Yeah. Dull darn poochy hairs. Pooch. My pooch. Yeah, we're gonna push this back. wrestling with this idea of 
the stylized skull, but I kind of want to go with more of a natural looking skull. But I'm not sure I can pull it off. Just not sure. I am filled with doubt. Just filled with it. See, the one problem I'm having here is this beak. I want it to be nice and sharp, but I don't know if I would be able to do that. Unless, of course, I just, you know, mush it up against the breastplate and just, you know, leave it as is. But I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. Okay. Let's try and do these orbitals again. So we're looking at it this way. This is like... He's looking basically on the chest. He's looking kind of downward. Yeah. So let's just go like this again. This. Right. Right. out a bit. Looks like a pelican. <laughs> Making a damn pelican skull. <laughs> damn, what uh what chapter is that? Oh it's the pelican. Okay, so let's do the nasal cavity next. That should be right around here. And here. Like so. forehead which means that I need to move some material around I think I might have to push the whole head back a bit I'm going to end up messing something up I know it, I know it it's okay, we're still just refining the shape this is not our end result definitely want to taper this in right this section right in here which means I want to move some of this material back up just like that yeah I think I'm gonna have to fudge it and make this meet up with the breastplate here just so that I can keep this kind of impression that this beak is just sweeping forward in that big nice big point that they do yeah that 
It's all about having this nice angular looking face, right? As eagles have just a really wonderful look to them. Dog hairs flying in here. Oh, yeah. Battle. Battle. Okay. Man, what time we got here? Holy cremoles, I've already been doing this an hour. Jeez Louise. Who would have thought that trying to sculpt a skull would take almost an hour? Yet, yeah, here we are. Here we are. Put those nasal cavities back in again. Trying not to be in a haste here. It's kind of hard though. Almost the shape there. It's almost the shape. Just want to smooth the surface a bit here. Doing this smoothing, this is probably where, you know, again, my sculpting experience is very minimal, but this is probably where I'd want a um, softer tip to smooth that surface out. Something where I can apply a little bit of pressure, but there isn't that much resistance, right? I assume. I don't know. Any of you sculptors out there, you tell me. hard part is resisting doing a, a real kind of natural looking skull as opposed to a stylized one yeah like I'm pretty darn close I'm getting pretty happy with like where this is going because over by the by the ocular socket there's another triangular shape from the front yeah, from the front, these are more, or yeah, from the front, these holes really are more on the front. When you look at them from the side, they're actually kind of like uh, a triangular shape running like that kind of thing. It's more like that. So let's, let's just try that. Let's try it out. It's really more like a triangle running this way. This way. Alright. I mean, see, right now we kind of have the idea that it is some sort of, you know, bird like skull, but I I definitely want it closer. But unfortunately, I do not possess the ability to make this, you know, one to one to what I'm looking at. 
And so I'm kind of have to, I have to fudge it a little bit. See, right now it actually looks more like a hawk skull. Yeah. Rather than an eagle skull. An eagle's got more uh, nasal cavity stuff going on. So if that's the nasal. Okay, yeah. So there's another triangle right here that runs like this. Damn, I'm getting pretty close. Because like when I look at it from the front, I don't know, am I showing this right? I, I can't see my monitor because I have all my images, my reference material up. But yeah, when you look at it about from that kind of perspective, it feels a bit more like the eagle skull. As opposed to this direction. This direction just looks like some sort of shape, right? I guess kind of from that perspective right there, it almost looks like an eagle skull. But yeah. But when you look head on at it, like you would if you were to look at it naturally, yeah, it's starting to feel a bit more like an eagle skull. I don't know if I'll be able to do this big ocular bone that comes over the brow, but yeah. But I definitely want to pull more of the material upwards, like so. Give a little bit more of a menacing look. dang that feels just with those three little holes that feels a lot more natural I mean depending on what your look which reference material you're going by you know it's kind of hard to tell but yeah yeah more of a top-down kind of look. Do I have something that offers a top-down kind of look? Yes, there is. Looks more like a horseshoe. Not a horseshoe, a snowshoe. When you look at it from the... Is that the top-down or top-up? Or down-up? Oh, that might be down-up. I want more of a top-down kind of look. Uh... Oh, okay, so I guess that's more of a top down. It's a white tail eagle. Yeah, the top down view, it is similar, but the orbital tapers in more and from like the, which would be kind of like a cheekbone comes out so this area here are yeah the orbital comes in more and the cheek comes out more i might be mucking this all up it's probably it's probably this area here it's probably going to get moved in more Yeah. 
when I'm looking at it, this perspective, it looks like a skull. It looks like an eagle skull, like my reference material. It's not quite as broad, but yeah. It's pretty close. And for me, a lot of times, pretty close is close enough. Kim, I think eagle beak slopes more outwards at the base of the skull, but you're starting to get there. The eagle beak slopes more outwards. What do you mean? Like which way? Outwards. Outwards. This way? Outwards. That way? Which way are we talking? I think what it is also is that yeah it, it, it's the brow this brow has to be more aggressive it's all one piece but yeah it's got to have more more angry it's got to be more angry around the nasal cavity it does bump back up so let's do something with this here let's change our shape just a little bit much that's a little too much really want that to taper in more thicker where it meets the skull not not from where I'm sitting when you type in eagle skull into Google and go to the images and there's many reference material on the eagle skull and I mean other than the hook at the bottom of the beak which I have no idea how I'm going to get. Um, yeah. It's really just kind of trying to maintain these, these, um, these open areas on the skull, you know, for his nasal cavity. Yeah. Because even uh, in some of the skulls, there's like this orbital bone around the orbital socket. And I have no idea how I would accomplish that. Kim, but then I'm looking at the skull of a Norwegian King Eagle. Yeah, I... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I mean, those are different eagles. I mean, I, at least I, I have no idea. I have no idea what a Norwegian King Eagle looks like. If he looks just like a normal Golden Eagle or if, it, if he is uh, different in any way.
triangle. So basically as I sculpt this around, like all I'm doing is basically just kind of looking at, at the shapes of the skull. And all I'm doing is I'm just trying to give the impression of those, those voids in the skull. Like obviously an eagle is supposed to have a great sense of smell. So like his skull is wide open where his nose is, right? For all those, you know, smelly bits in his skull. See, I keep going back and forth between a natural skull and a stylized skull. Oh, what did Kim say? Uh, ba -ba -ba. Kim, I put a pic in the Discord. It's one of the biggest in the world. It's a huge brown eagle. What if you put something like a dowel or something inside the green stuff so you can make the cavity and pull it out when the green stuff is hardened up a bit? Um... I not like f for what for the orbitals like to create that orbital bone like a, if look at the look type in golden eagle skull um you'll see what I'm talking about like he, he has a big orbital but it looks like there's a bone that comes over where his eye is and it protects his eye because I think like what we see is the eagle's eye is not as big as really how big his eye actually is which is would explain why eagles have such great eyesight because they there's just so much like he's all about the killing right like this animal is is a great hunter and yeah i mean his by just by his nose and eyes right like where's his ears his ears are really really small Usually animals that have really great hearing, those are typically prey animals. Whereas predatory, it's smell and eyes. Omnivores have, you know, great all around, but yeah. Birds of prey, though, they tend not to have great big ears on them. I mean, they can hear, but, you know. An owl, like look at an owl skull, right? An owl, his mouth is really quite small. He, I don't even know how big his um, olfactory, uh, his sense of smell. I have no idea how big his, his nose is. But you can see how much of his skull is dedicated to hearing, right? And that's how an owl hunts, is, is by hearing. It's moving behind me here. Things are moving. It's like paranormal.
that's feeling like a like an eagle skull. Uh, Kim, I was thinking of the cavity in the beak that goes right through the beak. Oh shit, no, I'm not. I'm not concerned about that. I, yeah, like you see some of the skulls where, like, yeah, you can see right through that. Yeah, this this is like even on a smaller miniature. I don't even know if I would even go through this much trouble to create those those empty spaces in there. But yeah, next the next challenge is trying to make or at least fake the jaw with the end of the beak. I think the the very tip of the beak, because it comes to such a great point, but, I mean, green stuff, I'm not very confident that it is going to get that shape properly, right? And retain it without, you know, breaking or, you know, wearing off or something, right? Although I should be looking more at the profile because, yeah... He is a little too much bump here. And this just tapers, like, just slopes, like, right down. Like so. Yeah. You kind of have to ignore this bit closest to the, um, to the armor. Because technically his, his jaw should come up and the rest of the beak cu curves forward. Greenleaf. My skull is dedicated to getting your shirt off. Jeez, that sounds like rape. That's some rapey type talk there. I don't know, bud. I don't know. That sounds like some rapey talk. Please don't tell me you you are into that. Uh, Kim, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's hard to get those small bones right. I would drop the ring bone... That is around the eye, and the skull, uh, the skull is older, and that piece fell off, and just sculpt the holes in the skull. Yeah, I'm not gonna worry about that. Yeah, that bone that looks like it would like you know hold his eye in place. Yeah, I'm not really worried about that. I that's yeah. Again, it's it's more just generalizations, really. That that I mean, like if I was really sculpting this like to look like a natural, real skull. Yeah, I'm. I'm not that skilled. I know enough about my own ability to know that I'm not that skilled at that. If I did more and more of it, sure. But yeah, we're not I'm not there yet. And also too, it's the limitation of the material I'm working in. This stuff is really, really soft. You know, like it's great, but it's really, really soft material. And I'm just trying to create the impressions of these things. This is more of just of an impression of these details. Yeah, when I look at it head on, I'm, I'm mostly pleased with it. Mostly. Not that I'm sitting here patting myself in the back or anything like that. Just, it's looking the part. I'm just trying to refine some of these shapes so that it's really obvious what this is I'm sure there's plenty of people out there who are not up on what exactly an eagle skull looks like wait what's happening oh Georgie Georgie what's happening buddy Wee! thank you for subscribing with the twitch primes thank you sir thank you thank you in fact that calls for a sip of coffee since I haven't had a sip in a bit. I just brought this down here when I came down and started the stream. It's already freaking cold. All right. Yeah, so like an eagle skull really is a nice triangular shape. And I'm like right there. I mean, like that, 
you know, that kind of looks the part. Uh, I know it's not a, you know, perfect one-to-one -to, -one to an eagle skull. I do not possess that ability to, you know, really render this, you know, one-to-one -one accurate. The next, the next trick, though, is to making, putting that impression of that jaw in that space there. Because the way the the way the uh, beak kind of tapers down, it's it comes to a nice sharp point, and I'm not sure I can do that with the green stuff. I'm sure I could. I'm sure a skilled craftsman could do it no problem. But that's not me. <laughs> I mean, overall, I mean, like, I'm pretty happy with how this looks. It's just, I gotta get this jaw and the rest is like this... There's this big wad of green stuff down here that I'm not sure how I'm going to get rid of. Snippers. I'll use snippers. But, to protect my snippers, I'm going to put some... Um, uh, fucking, what, what am I using? Chapstick. <laughs> That's what I'm using. Kim, it looks pretty good. Almost there now. Yeah, it's it's... I mean, it's closer to what I, I envisioned, and it's closer to what I want, and yeah, I'm just hitting a point now where, you know, it's how far do I want to monkey with this, right? Like, how far do I want to try and take this? And yeah, so I need to remove a bit of material here because I can just fudge this beak and bring it down a bit more, and then create the impression of the jaw, I think. It's really not a lot. It's only like, yeah, the same thickness as the cutters themselves that I want to remove. Just like so. So, just like that. Right there. <clears throat> then we're going to take uh, one of our sculpting tools. Get a little bit of lip balm on it. Okay, maybe more than a little just so I can safely pull this material out from under there. Just like so, without it sticking too much. And going all stringy on me. Yep, it's gonna be a pain. Come on, come on. There we go. Got it, got him. Actually, I kind of like how that looks. Okay, right like that. That almost looks the part right there. Almost. Eagle uh, eagle beaks come right down. There's a point at the at the end. How I'm going to accomplish that, I don't know. I think I'll just marvel at the at the luck I just had removing that chunk. Uh The McAllen. Hey ya! How's your day going? This looks epic. As in cool, not scale. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a space marine torso uh, in epic scale. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I'm having fun. I'm having fun. Um, I don't know how much of this effort that you've, you've followed, but yeah, I, I'm not much of a sculptor. I, you know, more of my strengths are in painting, uh, but I do enjoy trying to, uh, you know, refine my abilities not as a sculptor, but working with green stuff, really. I'll, I'll just, I mean, I'll just, you know, I'll be pleased with just being able to competently work with green stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll be happy with that. Yeah. So I'm going to try and bring a bit of a taper in here. Like so. Round off that edge. See right now it almost looks more like a like a hawk or a sparrow's uh, beak, and that's not what I want. Oh, damn it! Uh, well, I guess we're hitting the point where uh, it's time for the bravery test, <laughs> where basically I'm going to try and put that little hook into the beak. I don't think I'm going to go for as extreme a hook 
Because you get like a lot of bald eagles, they just have this massive spike that comes down from their beak. And I don't think I'll do that because the material itself just would not be able to withstand that. And it probably would just snap anyway, right? So, yeah. I have, well, I should probably get a little more. Just be putting a little bit of chapstick on my fingers. I'm just trying to refine the shape a little bit more. Put a little bit more tape taper into it. And, oh, here we go. Oh, I should probably put something, uh, I could probably move that material up a bit just to exaggerate this point a bit more. But, yeah. It having just that slight curve helps a lot. I don't know if you guys can see that well. I suppose, too, I could uh, uh, create the impression that that curvature is swooping in more just by pushing some of that material that way. I don't know. What do you guys think? Is this looking like an eagle skull? Does it feel like an eagle skull? If you look at it head on, does that feel more like an eagle skull? It looks like some sort of skull, right? <laughs> It looks like a skull, Chris. It's, just humor me, people. Just humor me. Just say, yeah, it looks like a skull. <laughs> it looks like a skull. Uh, the McAllen. Missed a lot. Is that the Bandai model? No, this is the McFarlane Hellblaster Artist Proof. Um, here, we'll take a quick little break from farting around with that skull for a moment. Um, yeah, this is the McFarlane Hellblaster um, Marine. I doing my own custom chapter. Uh, here are his shoulder pads. Uh, he's gonna have a uh, Native American type of vibe. Um, it's something that I've wanted to do for a while uh, for a custom Space Marine chapter. And so I'm basically imbuing it with my own cultural references. Being the Thunderbird, uh, this is gonna be the chapter symbol. He's in a he's a Thunderbird. And then this is gonna be his squadron marking. This is a bear paw. If you couldn't tell. <laughs> if I have to explain it, then I didn't do a very good job. But anyway. <laughs> and also a Thunderbird on his backpack as well. We're doing an eagle eagle skull instead of just a regular human skull on his chest. And yeah, the other part is the helmet. Uh, I was thinking of doing like a little bird skull. Uh, initially, I was thinking also maybe possibly a um, a bear skull. Here, it definitely would be a stylized bear skull because obviously little tiny bears, you know, whatever, right? But he's killing teddy bears. Uh, but I think I'm going to do something else on here that's also culturally relevant. I think I'm going to do something else there or in this space. I also was considering doing like a top knot as well. I don't know if I'm going to do a top knot. I don't know if I'm if I'm confident enough to, you know, start uh, messing around with, um, you know, um, just <laughs> doing stuff that's just kind of outside the norm. Now, usually, whenever you listen to old Chris, um, you know, I encourage everybody to go outside their comfort zones when, you know, attempting new projects but yeah i'm at i'm kind of at my limit for for uh outside of my comfort zone at the moment just because you know again my strengths are not in sculpting but what i did learn way back in the day when i was young and in college and taking art and stuff like that <clears throat> if you can draw it you can sculpt it. And I've always lived by that. That if you can draw it, you can sculpt it. And I can pretty much draw anything just by looking at it. Just about. And, yeah. So I did, I just, all I'm doing is I'm looking at reference material. I just basically Googled Eagle Skull. And I'm just, I've got all the images, just the first page images in front of me. And that's all I've been using as reference for this. And all I'm doing is just basically blocking in 
and moving the, the, the material around, just trying to get the impression of the shapes. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to do a one-to-one -one interpretation of an actual eagle skull. I just want to get, you know, just the, the gist that you, you look at it and go, oh, it's a bird skull. Oh, it must be like an eagle skull. You know what I mean? Like, because the rest of the theme of, of, the, of the scheme should give you that impression of what you're looking at right if i've done my job correctly that if this has like a whole native american vibe then you see something that looks like a bird skull ah it's got to be an eagle right because you know native americans and eagles were you know synonymous with each other right so yeah or wolves or you know whatever right but anyway uh kim i was wondering if uh if i'm going to start my next two mcfarland intercessors or going to start painting Belladama Volga for my soul blight grave lords. Well, weren't you just finishing off a bunch of marines? Oh no, but you were doing your intercessors. I don't know. Do whatever, man. Do whatever makes you happy. Yeah, you see what it is. At least a bird skull of some kind. Yeah, it's it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. George Ra Raven skull or even crow. Yeah, I mean, like you know, it's a bird skull. And if I say it's an eagle skull, that's well, okay. It's an eagle. And see, the really distinguishing thing about an eagle skull. Is it they've got a big beak in comparison to the rest of their head, but usually it's because it looks that way because they all the feathers usually, but also it's the way that beak tapers, right? You know, it, it almost looks a bit like a hawk beak, but not quite. An eagle beak just got more pronounced, it kind of comes straight forward out and then hooks, right? So, yeah, the McAllen looks more southwest than Haida motif, looks awesome. Looks more southwest than Ida. Well, I'm not either. Uh, I'm Ojibwe. Um, more correctly, I'm Anishinaabek. And this is how we do our Thunderbird. A Thunderbird is the symbol of our nation. And, yeah. So. Anyway. Yeah. That's the plan, man. So, I'm just trying to quickly... Because I've been working on this for... Holy shit, an hour and a half. And I'm only this far. It's taken me this long to get to this shape. <laughs> I'm sure a more skilled sculptor could have gotten here way faster. I'm sure a quarter of the time. Somebody who is more adept at sculpting, yeah, they probably would have got here way earlier. But it's not a race. At least I don't think it is. Is it a race? I just want a little bit more roundness in this orbital. But again, I don't really want it to look like a crow or any other kind of bird, right? It's got to be it's got to be an eagle. Just because It's almost a trope, right? It's almost a trope. You know, Native Americans and the birds and stuff, right? Green Leaf, it is a race, and you came in last. Oh, to, to sculpt it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can see a little bit of sticking. A little bit more. Oh, shit. I just dropped my damn tool. Oh. Probably got covered in dog hair now. My dooge in dooge hair. Covered in dooge hair. See, the slicker the tool is, the easier it is to glide this over the surface. And as long as you keep a light amount of pressure, you can actually just smooth out the green stuff with this tool. So you gotta be very very gentle 
gentle. See, I just keep looking at it kind of in this angle so I can see at least it looks like the eagle skull. Top down, yeah, looks like a bird skull, right? But when you look at it head on, it looks a bit more like the eagle skull. It's not perfect. <clears throat> but, you know, I don't know. If it really, you know, triggers my OCD, I might come back in once it's cured and just refine some of the shapes and build them up a bit more but yeah i don't know i'm like like starting to hit that point where i just want to get to the painting of this guy use this tool right here i'm gonna use this little wedge shaped tool just to kind of work some of the uh the material in behind the beak i just want to push some of this material underneath just a little bit further in but carefully lower lower too low lower yeah, something like that because I can't get rid of too much material because then this otherwise this becomes really flimsy and I don't want that like, for the most part, this will probably sit on my shelf. Just because, you know, it's a big-ass action figure. But I don't want, you know, I don't want just, you know, it hanging. And also, too, it, it also is the nature of working with green stuff, right? <clears throat> See, like, when you look at them from the top down... You actually don't really see much of his nasal uh, cavities. It's really more just in the eye. And really the eye, the brow comes over more of the uh, orbital socket. Oh, man. Yeah, right there. I just want that tapered in more. But see, as I keep kind of like doing this kind of motion along the green stuff, I'm actually extending out and moving the rest of the material. Like if you've been paying attention, the beak did not extend that far past this edge of the uh, of the torso but yeah I don't know but I don't know about you but is it feeling like a like an eagle skull it's feeling like it right like it's it's kind of the impression of one at this point I'm, I'm I'll be happy with that <laughs> I'm getting kind of tired of this <laughs> It's kind of exhausting. Anyway. Yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll create the impression of that jaw using just this little bit right in here. also gives that impression of that curvature in that space oh, moved quite a bit there no. moving it around a little 
too much. this in a bit oh yeah we're, we're so darn close to the to the end result of what I'm looking for we are so close I just want to right where these nasal cavities are I want to push that area in a bit really kind of narrow that down Uh, looks good and the danger is that you work it so much that it starts taking away from the piece instead of adding to it yeah 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 I, I agree 100% if you end up overworking it yeah it'll draw too much attention and you don't want that it's like any good accessory right And that's what it is. This is just an accessory. This isn't the, the identity of the piece. The identity of the piece is the whole thing, right? I agree, Kim. I agree. 100%. I'd like it if I had some softer kind of um, tool that I can pinch that. But yeah, see how that curves now? I don't know if you guys can see that well, but yeah. Again, the identity of this little skull really is all in that beak, right? It's all in the beak. It's all in the beak. I gotta fix this side though. This side I'm happy with where that, like the little jaw, the little line I created there for the impression of that jaw. This side, messed it up. <laughs> it was looking good, then I messed it up. Oh, you know what? Maybe I should use my little wedge. Just to create that little line. Got a little wedge tool here. A little chisel shape. See if we can do this without messing it up. No, nope, can't do it. Doesn't come to a fine enough area. This one was better. It gives me that little angled shape. The other thing is, is I'd like to be able to move some of this material back a bit and refine this taper. This tool, damn tool sticking already. <clears throat> Hands get so greasy using this stuff, but it's okay. As long as it's not sticking to my tool and as long as it's giving nice smooth edges I'm fine I'm fine with the greasy feeling despite it being really hot in my office as well all I'm looking to do is just refine this this taper in the skull so it feels more streamlined right because the way the eagle skull looks is it's very streamlined. I may have to come back in and uh, add more to the orbitals. I don't know. <laughs> I know, it's just, you know, monkeying with it, right? All I'm doing is I'm just gently blending the the edges and just smoothing out that 
that contour there. That's it. Makes it a little crooked as you work it, but that's just because, you know, the material is so soft, right? But, like, looking down, I, like, I want that. Just taper it in just a little bit more. When you're looking down at that. But, yeah. Let's grab some more. keep pushing that little tapered edge right there I think I'm gonna stop right there I'm, I'm at that point now where it's kind of I probably should just stop mind you though this little line under the mouth is kind of annoying me uh, let's use let's try this tool I probably should just use an X-Acto blade just to get that fine line in there, but yeah, whatever. I'm just going to use this, just to refine this little line for where the jaw is. Can't be too aggressive with it because you end up just moving the whole thing. See, this side gives me the impression of that jawline a little bit better, as opposed to this side. I don't know why, for whatever reason, it's just not. It's not happening visually for me. Not sure why. Why? Well, no, why? Because I'm like shit at sculpting. <laughs> That's why it's not happening. Because I'm shit, man. I'm shit at this. <laughs> yeah. Because right now, all I'm really kind of happy with is is. Is it symmetrical and does it feel like a bird skull and yeah I'm I'm mostly happy with that I think I should just leave this let it cure if I really feel it necessary to come in and just refine some of these shapes I can do that afterwards yeah we're just gonna stop right there as far as the skulls concerned but I'm, I'm feeling it. I am feeling it. I mean, once there's paint on this, I can always fudge some of the things, right? Of course, it might not even get painted like a real skull. I might paint it like it's, you know, part of the wings. Like it's like, you know, a sculpted, you know, like it's made of metal or something like that, right? Because, I mean, like, it, it, like, they're a Native American kind of vibe, but it's not, it's not like they're, you know, wearing bone armor or anything like that. It's, they're wearing Space Marine armor. They're Space Marines. They just have, you know, uh, an, a, a, it's part of their identity, right? It's like Space Wolves. It's just like Space Wolves. And, in fact, the, mo the vibe really uh, will feel more like a Space Wolf kind of vibe. You know, anytime you have any people that are, you know, have um, 
I don't know what the word for it is, more of a feral like appearance. But that's the plan. All right. Should we, what time are we at here? We got eight minutes left. Should we try and try and sculpt a feather? Let's try out a feather. Uh, I'm just looking for something to set the green stuff on so that I can remove it without, you know, destroying it, right? Somewhere where it basically it can cure in peace kind of thing. And I think I have something here. Yeah, I have this old Ziploc bag. Yeah, I have an old Ziploc bag. We'll use this. This will protect the green stuff. Yeah, then we'll use this. I also work on a glass counter, but um, this will be fun. And in fact, we probably could just take a little bit of the chapstick. It's not, um, yeah, not a huge issue. I'm just gonna lay a little bit down here, kind of just smear the surface. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll that out. Well, not roll, but I'll I'll just use my fingers and you know flatten it out, and then um, can go from there. Ah, uh, but up, 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 where the hell am I? Kim. I see so much crappy sculpting on the McFarland subreddit so that um, the work you have done is miles above that and looks pretty great. Well, thank you. Thank you, Kim. Um, that's, that's, the real, that's the real booster to my ego I needed. I needed that. Thanks. <laughs> I feel better now. Thank you. <laughs> the print of your fingerprint in the green stuff almost gives that slight impression of that texture on a feather. I wonder if I can retain that as I'm working on this. Or should I just do more like just like a solid shape and then, you know, kind of paint the um, the look on and just go for a straight up, you know, like vibe <laughs> as it were. I think maybe I'll do that. Also, the other part is, like, how thin should I go? I mean, feathers are pretty thin. But, I mean, if you look at feathers on any, you know, GW models, feathers are pretty darn thick. <laughs> In comparison, really. Like, realistically, G-dubs, uh, or any company, really, at 28 millimeter scale, um, the feathers really should be uh, more like, um, like brass etched like that level of thinness and strength which is really hard at this scale yeah they should just do them as brass etchings i'm going to open up another tab and i'm going to type in egal no not egal skull egal feather uh no so let's try try feather there we go and boom I think for these, I think I will go a little bit more um, stylized. But really, it's to capture the look of an eagle feather. It really is just that big, broad shape, a slight curvature, and then the um, the loose tufts at the base, like where you know obviously the feather uh, connects to the body. There's it's often very floofy at that point right but otherwise an eagle feather it's really just more of a of a, a long oval with maybe those little breaks in them right just with some age and stuff like that it's really just in the coloring of an eagle feather that you go oh that's an eagle feather it's really about that length and shape almost like um like a feather <laughs> I, I, I don't I, I really don't know any other way to describe that <laughs> a feather it looks like a feather so what feather does it look like it looks like a feather like you know <laughs> Kim yeah uh, I would do a flat feather with some notches in it and paint the texture yeah I, I think so I think it's probably the better way to go now the other question is is what scale should the feather be eagle feathers are pretty big um, like 
the size of a forearm. Yeah. They're almost the size of a forearm. So realistically, like if I, if I was to do an eagle feather in scale with this guy, the length of this blob really is about the length I think an eagle feather at this scale should be. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I, this size, I think, will stay with. What's that little dark schmutz in there? What the hell is that? Where did that come from? <laughs> God dang it. Anyway, let's put some uh, chapstick on here. Basically, all I want to do is just try to have like a uniform uh, thickness to this little blobby. And then what I'll do is I'll quickly kind of cut out an outline. I'm hoping maybe I can get two feathers out of this little blob, the, the remainder of this little blob. I'm thinking. Right? Yeah, I should be able to get two feathers out of this little blob. So for that, let's use, we could probably use this tool just to kind of quickly get my outline. I'm gonna need this tool to really shape it. I might need this one as well. I'm gonna end up using my metal tools, I think, for this. But yeah, I think I'll just draw the shapes with this tool. This is just basically a little round shaper. Uh, McAllen, photo etched parts would be great. So would 3D printed parts. Yeah, 3D printed feathers. I don't know. Like, they're, they're just, like, 3D printed. Especially if you went with uh, the resin printers. Um, I would think that would probably do a pretty good job. But it would look to a similar style as, um, like, GW's. The way they do feathers, right? If you ever look like old scale or old, old school uh, Dark Angels. Or even, like, I've got Lizardmen here. Um, yeah, like, see how, like, look how thick they have to sculpt it, right? Like, even the feathers on his back, look how thick those, they looks like scales, right? They're pretty darn thick. Uh, where's another model with some feathers? Who's got feathers? God dang it. Yeah, he's got feathers. Yeah, see, look how thick those feathers are on his arm. It has to be that way because of the, um of the scale right but i mean an actual feather like to scale with us like in a one-to-one -one sense it's be very very thin and only brass etching it, do you get that strength at that thinness especially working in this scale uh kim three times the size of a mcfarland marine hand you, you think it should be three times <laughs> one two feather I think that's I think that's a good size I don't know if, if it doesn't work and it doesn't look right you can always make more because all I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same process here is just you know um, flatten it out get the overall shape and then paint it really you know although I see some stylized approaches where there's more of a taper at the end of the eagle feather but yeah Kim, three times, this, or no, McAllen. No, the scale should be that of a standard human, not a genetically enhanced marine. True. Very, very true. Kim, the hand across, not from the wrist to the fingers. Hand across. You mean, oh, like this way, not this way. <laughs> How about the length of a forearm? <laughs> That's probably the same length almost, yeah. It's almost, well, it's not quite, but anyway. But that's also true, though. Uh, I agree with McAllen. Um, yeah. A standard human, not a genetically enhanced Marine. Because, yeah, Marines are like what? Almost 50% bigger than a human, would you say? All right. Uh, so I'm going to quickly draw this out. Yeah. So the stem is over here. Actually, maybe I should just do the spine, right? Maybe if I cut this in half and re-roll it out and just try and get the shape and then just chop off the... Yeah, you know what? Instead of just trying to do that, yeah. Again, I don't sculpt that often. So, like, you know, these shortcuts and such, you know, are kind of lost on me sometimes. <laughs> so, basically, all I'm just going to do is just go uh, 
something like this. And cut this in half. That's it. It's a leaf. <laughs> and really fast, I'm just going to... No, I probably can even just retain this shape, really. Yeah. Shit, that's almost there right there. That's almost it. It's kind of big, though. It is kind of big. So, yeah, we're going to cut off a lot of material, I think. But, yeah, we'll do two feathers right here. Just like so. Yeah, this is almost the shape right there, though. But, yeah, it wouldn't be his form. It would actually probably be less. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's okay, because we, we can shave off material. So, yeah, let's get to it. Enough gum flapping, let's get to it. What time we at here? Oh, two hours. <clears throat> Just moistening up my tools. Keep them nice and moist. Moist. The other tricky part is the spine in the feather. I suppose we could do that yeah with a tool like this now this is starting to actually get a little bit firm so we're definitely running out of time to work with this and again this is just a test I have I've never done this before at least I don't think I've ever sculpted feathers I'm trying to think of any conversions I've done where I've, I've tried to sculpt feathers and I can't think of any right now. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this on both sides and leave a ridge so that that can be the spine and I can cut away the material um, and hopefully have something that resembles a feather. So I'm just going to go ooh, apply a bit of pressure like that. Try and keep it somewhere in the middle of the, of the shape. Just create that spine. That's probably too thick for the spine. That's actually not even enough. <laughs> uh, let's go like this. Yeah, that's a lot better right there. I'm just applying a little bit more pressure just to really define the shape. Yeah, I don't know how well you can see that. But the spine right in the middle there. Yeah, I think that's I think that's okay. So let's try and refine that over here. So I'm just applying a bit more pressure. Now, as you apply more pressure, you are going to move more of the material around. So that's fine. Yeah, this side is not quite as clean looking. Again, if I hate it, I can always just you know do more. Ugh. Hopefully I'm not going too thin here. Hopefully. I'm just flattening it out. Trying to leave that spine there. I think this one I've overworked it. Oh, 
also too I can feel that the putty is starting to um, firm up it's probably not starting to it probably has been firming up for a while obviously just because the eagle skull on the chest probably took so damn long Right now it looks a little bit more like a leaf. That's fine. Feathers kind of have that same similar quality to them. Oh, the spine doesn't go all the way to the end though. The spine tapers off actually. So realistically, I should probably taper it off at some point like that. Leave that as the end of the feather. Yeah. And where's the spine here? Yeah, this one right here. If I was really clever, if I was really clever, I would have worked out how to do. Yeah, there's that little bit of schmutz there. What the hell was that? Anyway. <coughs> Just create that texture of the feather in, in this material as it is. All right. Yeah, it's like there's an air bubble in that right there. I don't know what that is. All right. Enough goofing around. Uh, let's just get the shape. Let's get the shape. So let's start with this one here. And we'll just lop that off. Yeah, it's already starting to really firm up. Uh, I'm not even sure how this is going to turn out. do something like this right there do that right there let's try and leave that little bit of spine of the feather in place like so remove that piss off remove that Okay. Yeah, this is this is not how I intended this to look. But we're going with it. <clears throat> I gotta move it around a bit here as I'm working just so I can accurately do this. Off. Yeah, might have to give this another go. This is starting to get really, really hard. It's becoming very, very firm. I know it sounds like I'm making excuses here, but Kim, after two hours, it's pretty hard. I would not bother with it. Yeah, no, I, I'm, th I think I'm just gonna try and get the shapes. That way I can kind of roughly visualize where I want to place things because I think I want feathers on the gun. I think I want one or two feathers on the gun. And I'm thinking now that, yeah, I'm going to have um, a feathery thing going on with the helmet. And that'll be it for feathers. So I only really need maybe about three or four. Three or four feathers. But yeah, I think I'm going to try and just kind of roughly do this somehow, I think. Yeah, it's, oh yeah, I think it's barely coming apart now. Go, dang it.
if I was a really smart guy, like if I was really smart, I would work this out in brass, brass etching. And that would give me probably the best scale is brass, brass etched. Yeah, because I'd, I'd like to have this a little bit smoother. And it's got like, like, um, marks in it from like trying to smooth it out. also running into the situation of maybe this might get too thin and I don't want that either yeah this is becoming too too thin but as I move the material around and try and work out how I want to do this it's giving me ideas for the next time which is you know true of anything really like you know when you work out how to paint something and the first time you do it it doesn't work for you but as you work with it you you know you see where you're going wrong with it you're paying attention to what you're doing and you, and you can refine it so that the next time you do it it's a little bit better and then the next time you refine it you're like oh okay oh this yeah see and this is what really where i wanted it how do I get it to this this other part? And then you refine that technique down a little further. And you know, it's just refine. It's just practice and practice and practice, right? That's all it is. You know what? Yeah, let's just try and see if we can replicate the break in a feather, just like that, and something like that. This is a stylized approach. Yeah. I mean, it's all it's all mucked up right now, but yeah. I mean, this is pr this is very unlikely to see um, the end result, but this does kind of help in refining the idea down. I think I've worked this a little too thin. <clears throat> I think what I'll do is once this is cured, I'm gonna just simply cut it with a blade and see how it looks but yeah anyway that's the first attempt at doing a feather um i would consider it a fail but a fail is not bad a fail is just simply you know the first step to succeeding and yeah oh yeah it's like it's not even tacky anymore like that's how that's how long i've been farting around with the green stuff trying to get that damn skull together but i am mostly happy with where the skull is at mostly i mean yeah is it is it exactly like an eagle skull eh, not quite um more of an impression of of one but i'm okay with just the impression of it you know i'm okay with that but yeah it feels more like an eagle skull when you're looking at it from this perspective as opposed to this one Anyway, feel free to leave a comment down below or in the chat, whatever. Um, if you think it works, if it doesn't, whatever. I mean, I'm not changing it, so it really doesn't matter. <laughs> Eagle Feathers, I think I'm going to give this another go a little bit later. I may pop back on for another stream. I may not. If you see me, don't be surprised. And if you don't, again, don't be surprised. Oh, it is freaking warm in here. My coffee's... It's warm in here. My coffee's cold. This day is just coming apart. It's just coming apart on me. So the wheels are coming off. Ah. Kim, it's good for a McFarlane Marine. It's just an action fig. What do you mean, just an action fig? It's an action fig, man. Come on, Kim. Like, this is... Is this not what we wanted when we were young? Is this not what we asked for? For so many years, Space Marine action figures, had we not asked for this for ages and ages? Yes, I know. I want Orc action figures. I want Eldar action figures. I want Tyranid action figures. I want them all. So, yeah. Anyway. Alrighty, I'm heading out. I'm going to go get something to eat. Uh, I'm mostly okay with that skull. 
Mostly. Mostly. Yeah. Do you think I need to do, like, necklaces and, you know, like little totems and stuff? Do you think that's necessary? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, nah, I don't know. <laughs> I was just thinking about some other elements, but I mean, I don't. I want it to still be a space marine with Native American type themes. I don't want it to be, uh, you know, a Native American who happens to look space marine, right? Yeah, I don't. I don't want it to be a full-on, you know, Ojibwe warrior in space marine armor. I want it to be. A space marine that has elements of being an Ojibwe warrior kind of thing. That's really, I think, the goal. Anywho, I'm done for now. I'm going to clean up. Put my shapers back in their packy edge. Put my, put my tools away. should always take the time after a session to clean up what you're doing. Put your stuff away. Clean them. Make sure they're all still, you know, in good working order. Just take the time, you know, put the caps back on things, that kind of stuff. Anywho, I'll see you guys later. Um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the subs and resubs and all that. I'll see you guys later. Dun 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 dun. Dun 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 dun